Ever since I was younger, I have always been that strange kid who returned home from a family holiday with a collection of various maps. Some from places I visited, and some that I picked up in the reception of my hotel. I would rummage through my suitcases and bags, looking for all the maps I had collected, carefully placing them one by one in a box. I've been hoarding maps in my bedroom for 17 years. The concept of maps always fascinated me from a young age. I would stare at them in detail, looking at the way the lines connected villages to villages and cities to cities. But I would always wonder why something with the aim to simplify just seems so complex. With every produced world map, the elements become more and more intricate, allowing us to build a greater understanding of the world we live in. Modern maps are far more precise than maps were before. Anaximander, a Greek cartographer, developed the first known map in the 6th century BC. He, believing that the world was cylindrical, constructed a map with the outline of all discovered land in three main continents, Europe, Libya, and Asia. We now know that Europe is not the shape of a semicircle, and that the Earth is not cylindrical, but we did not know that before. On a positive note, at least Italy looks absolutely perfect. <laughs> Most of us, like me, have maps of major cities like New York and London engraved into our brains. With one quick Google, we can find a map of the floating chunk of ice which makes up Antarctica, and the changes in its shelf from 1994 to 2012. We have new orbital maps which show the positions of each one of Saturn's 62 moons. We even have new maps which can locate massive galaxies and distant black holes 27,000 light years away. But we didn't have them before. Scientists are currently embarking on a journey to accurately map this, but how many of us can identify what it is? That's right, the human brain, made up of four main lobes of neuron connections running from every single edge. Neurons are the basic work units of the brain, yet mapping their connections is a task beyond known limits of complexity. The thing is, we know so little about the human brain. And when I say so little, I mean so little. I would make up a figure right here on the spot and say we know less than 1% of all available knowledge, but we don't even know how much there is out there to begin with. I mean, how can we say we know 1% if we have no idea what 100% looks like? We have mapped the skeletal muscular and digestive systems of the human body, to name a few, but we have yet to map the brain to the same unprecedented detail we have mapped man-made and natural features on the Earth's surface. Arguably the most important organ in the body, the reason we think, breathe, move, and love, we know relatively nothing about our brain and how it works. The human brain has only just begun to discover itself. The first maps of continental Africa were simply an outline of barren space with a few major areas such as Congo and Cyprus. Ancient European cartographers simply did not know what was inside Africa. Not knowing any better, they produced a map of the outline of a desert with a few major areas. But now we know otherwise. Mapping the brain has been congruent to the progress of mapping the Earth because of the simple fact that we have to start from somewhere. Twenty years ago, we knew the outline of the brain. Today, we have a much deeper understanding of what lies inside. Neuroscientist Matthew Glasser once said, mapping the brain is like knowing such a thing as Europe existed, but never knowing it is made up of individual countries, each with their own unique features. We now know that Europe is made up of 50 countries, 26 major lakes, and 1,352 rivers. You can fact check me on that. So, what does a brain map actually look like? This is a human connectome. A connectome is a comprehensive map of all neuron connections in the human brain. That is a map of 100 billion individual neurons. The role these neurons play in our brain is to transfer messages from one end to the other and all around the body. But only eight years ago, the Human Connectome Project started in the United States, 
with the aim to accurately map the brain to the same unprecedented detail we have mapped creatures on the Earth's surface. Today, this is what we have to look at. Beautiful, right? The connections between neurons allow us to think, breathe, move, and react. Basically, they allow us to be who we are. So, if neurons are so important, how come the journey to map them only began less than a decade ago? Because the difference between mapping the brain and mapping the earth is the idea of permanence. Or talking about the human brain, the lack of permanence. Our brains have plastic qualities, allowing them to adapt to new changes. Not only this, but every fraction of a millisecond that passes, a message is sent between a pair of neurons. And every fraction of a millisecond later, a different message is sent between the same two neurons. It would be like having to create a comprehensive map of New York City, but needing to know the whereabouts of each individual every single fraction of a millisecond. Not only this, but it would be like having to know what each individual is thinking and feeling and how they are expressing their feelings to others every single fraction of a millisecond. In that sense, mapping the earth undermines the complexity of mapping the brain. So we know X percent more about the brain than we did eight years ago, and X percent more than we did eight years before that. Because our brains, the mapping our brains is like having the world's largest bundle of wires and only just managing to untie them. If we know the layout of the brain, we can start to understand the function. If we build a basic mind map, a path will be created in the discovery of scientific knowledge. Because with brains, like cartography, we have to start from somewhere. And that starting point is maps. Trying to navigate yourself from one side of Prague to the other is a pointless task without a map. Trying to identify the individual components of the brain which make us who we are is a pointless task without a map. Because maps make life so simple. Not only can we see nature in science, we can also see science in nature. Our, the outline of our brains is like the way the Earth has been formed with mountains and river valleys. The four main lobes are like four continents, with neuron bundles like major cities. But the connections between the neurons are like buses carrying passengers down the highway. Mapping the brain not only allows us to identify how our brain works effectively, it also allows us to identify why it sometimes doesn't. Scientists theorize that mental problems such as obsessive compulsive disorder and attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, OCD and ADHD, are not only genetic, but also rely on the way our brain transfers messages. If we precisely identify the functions of the brain, we can identify where they go wrong, and hopefully we can prevent them from doing so. Mapping the brain has and will allow us to delve deeper into scientific knowledge, and hopefully, to help those in need. Statistician George Box once said, all models are wrong, but some are useful. And neuron mapping is the most useful place to start in the fight to understand the human brain. <laughs>